let's learn something really quick. If you got the time, yo, absolutely. And you got the discipline, there's no question about it. I love that. Yeah, that's a great practice to put into your everyday life, you guys. You generally regret the things you don't do, not the things you didn't do. Let me say it that way. Mic drop. This was just awesome. I love meeting my guests in person, and it's a whole nother animal, and the energy is just electric. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. Live your best life. You must live Label Free. What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live, live your best life, you must live Label Free. As always, bring incredible guests from all over the world, so sit back, relax, and tune in. My next guest is a tech for health, wellness, and lifestyle innovator. You know I'm very excited about that. She's the president and CEO of JK Products and Services North America. Please welcome Bryn Scarborough. Bryn, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Super excited to hear about your journey. And I love that you are in a space, tech for health and wellness, because I feel like there are so many different avenues for our wellness these days that people aren't really educated on. So before we get into that and what you guys offer, tell us a little bit about your journey becoming a a CEO of such a large corporation. Yeah, absolutely. I'm an internal, let's say, success story. And I love those, frankly, because I love being able to prove that there's a growth path and a success path from within, you know, and without a company. I think that's really important uh, for people mid-career today to know that they've got growth forward. But yeah, I started with JK 12 years ago now, going on 13, and started as the business development director. And at that time, JK was really only producing sunlight-based tanning equipment. Really nothing in the well tech space yet, nothing in the autonomous wellness space. Um, But I was brought in kind of as an outside perspective started working in some of the newer technology development, working in some skincare, and then also some spray tanning as we started segmenting and trying to move into other market verticals and things like that. So 13 years seems like a long time, but it's been a pretty like stair-stepped and incremental growth path every couple of years, overtaking a new role and a new set of responsibilities. Um, Moved through, you know, the marketing team and then on through executive director of sales and then after that, about six years ago, overtook full company operations as managing director and then further as CEO. That's amazing. And I kind of talked about this before we started recording. I think it's fitting that a woman that is as beautiful as you would be in charge of a health and wellness company. But I'm sure it hasn't been easy to really kind of make, allow people to take you seriously along the way because blondes, especially, right? And attractive women, we get labeled a certain way and sometimes might not be taken seriously. So for you to climb that ladder of success and and I, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it looked the way that you do because I'm sure you had a lot of judgment along the way is awesome. I love it. Go blondes. Well, you know, I, I have a few, um, let's say, stereotypical things stacked in my corner. I'm blonde. I'm Southern. Uh, I come from pretty humble beginnings and yeah, I still continue to like, I feel like I'd live the story or I try to live the story of wellness and longevity and, and, you know, in investing in the types of habits that, you know, keep you young and vital for a long time. So I would say it's mixed. I remember seeing a quote. I love Sarah Blakely. And I also love that she's in the middle of reinventing herself again with this new brand, but she said a long time ago, and this quote stuck with me, is that if your ego can handle being underestimated, it, it is a superpower exactly. because it gives you such a strategic advantage to be consistently underestimated, right? It's really hard to predict what you're going to do when when people underestimate your ability. And so don't get me wrong, it's ego work, there's no doubt. Oh, yeah. And sometimes it's just owning space, but it's also realizing that you know there's strategy there uh, to be executed as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, I love it. And so moving into offering red light therapy, the the water massage beds, and I know that you do the tanning beds, what other technology do you, you guys offer? So those are some pretty big changes for us in the last couple of years. You know, as we've pivoted into, let's say, more autonomous wellness spaces, you know, the consumer demand for wellness and the consumer awareness of a what wellness is higher than it's ever been, which is incredible, right? There's yeah, a good. industry that has popped up around this idea of um, recovery, longevity, prevention, 
And those words even mean something different than they did five, 10 years ago. You know, the meaning that we associate with those words. And so we were the first company on the market to come out with Total Body Red Light almost 15 mm -hmm. years ago, but that conversation wasn't ready to be had at that time. Now we've expanded that portfolio, brought in infrared to that um, exposure as well. So we have four or five pieces of equipment that are able to fit different lanes of a business model in addition to dry water massage. And, and you'll see other modalities in the next couple of years as well that really stack together from a habit stack perspective. I love that. I'm a fan of red light therapy. I do, you know, I do the water massage, but at the gym. So I kind of jumped on that. I think was it or here in Chicago, Export Fitness, they had yeah. one of the first uh, red light therapy for your face. They only offer for yeah. your face. Now yeah. there's different machines, what have you, that you can like stand up in front of and you can even get it for your home. You know, yeah. I, I know that that's pretty popular too. I've yet to get that because we're waiting to move. That's on my list to purchase. Yeah, it, it's, you know, there's a few things that are part of my like most important habits for me, it's hot and cold. I love sauna and I love, I love to hate. I participated in yeah. lunch. I love what it does. I don't necessarily love the experience and red light. Those three things are kind of my um, requirements when it comes to do not just the anti-aging, but longevity. Red light, people tend to really overcomplicate it, but at the end of the day, it feeds the cellular regeneration process. And that has so many effects, everything from skin to mental acuity to mental health to energy immune yeah. system lots of things when you're feeding the, the cell the more uh efficiently and consistently you know especially when we have we're environmentally we're just so there's such an onslaught of either intake output or you know environmental factors that are really changing the way that we live today yeah i'm a big fan and i believe in it and i think that the more that we educate people around the benefits of the red light therapy, the better it's going to be, you know, for that longevity. I talked to a lot of people on the show and, you know, the different belief systems that they have. I actually had a gentleman on that who was almost 80. You would never believe it. Like mm -hmm. incredibly, like in such great shape. He's founded a supplement company a long time ago and just really talks about wellness and vitality and all that. And I'm obviously a big fan. I'm a former bodybuilder. I take my supplements. I work out. You know, like I, I think that there are so many simple things to do for your regimen to keep you vital that I think that society sometimes overcomplicates that. I totally agree with you. You know, as much as I am a, a well tech nerd and I believe technology is a force multiplier in this space and you can choose to use it for good or bad. It's up to you. But if you choose to put it to work in a positive way, I really believe, you know, technology can help us unlock certain things to not just improve our longevity, because for the longest time, that's just really meant elder care. That's meant yeah. being alive longer, but not necessarily being healthy and happy longer. Mm. And so this idea of health span, I think, is incredibly important, not just how long do you live, but how long are you healthy and, and vital, like you said, and really creating an importance around recovery that's different than just your foam roller and your massage gun. And I, both of those things. But when, when we're talking about balancing and oscillating inputs and outputs, the need is different for recovery now than I think it even was a few years ago. We are more stressed. Like our rubber band is stretched tighter than it's ever been. We saw that during the COVID. I used to say from an employee perspective to my team, like just be aware that what people are carrying in, in their backpacks is much heavier than it was two years ago. Oh yeah. You know, it's just that constant drag of increased stress pretty much in every avenue of life. So when we talk about recovery, we actually talk about down-regulating the central nervous system, mm. not working on muscle soreness. And that's a real change in that definition over the last few years, same way with longevity. I love that. Yeah. I mean, in today's environment, I personally try not to like buy into all the rhetoric, right, that we hear in mm -hmm all the divisiveness, but it is taking a toll on people, you know, and I think that a lot having some of these modalities to help them de-stress and not have to take such a toll on the nervous system is very important. Yeah. We've eliminated all mental spaciousness, right? We're connected to multiple devices, 18 to 20 hours a day. It is the first and last in everything that we think about, you know, whether it's email, Teams. I, I have six devices in front of me that right now that could all and me notifications at all times. And so this idea that 
you know, we were meant to live this way. It's not right. The brain yeah. space is to be creative and to come up with new ideas and solutions and those types of things. What has happened is it's become harder for us to find that space or even the 15, 20 minutes where we put our phone down and, and just breathe for a little while, right? People are uncomfortable with themselves um, in that type of environment, but that's really what the brain is craving. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I know I personally, like sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm, um, having withdrawals if I don't look at my phone for a certain like if I'm used if it's going off all day long I'm email after email and it like I, it starts slowing down like later in the day I've I feel like I'm having withdrawals from like not that constant stimulation right because we're overstimulated and, and for me as a creator like I need to have take that time to decompress because yeah. then I'm not able to show up 100% for my guests or whatever on my output is for the day so yeah, it is. It's a a delicate balance for sure in today's world. It's a delicate balance, and it's one that to maintain that balance is taking a lot more intentional effort. Mm. It takes awareness. It takes an intentional effort to put the phone away for ten minutes and breathe, or to you know even do a mindfulness meditation. That's the cool thing about some of our equipment is that whether it's dry water massage or even red light, red light is incredibly relaxing. It provides that 15 minutes in an automated way where you're not on your phone, you've got multiple senses being stimulated at the same time. It causes the brain to have a really difficult time to remember whatever it was you were stressed about when you came into that session. We really do put a, a heightened advantage on the types of autonomous services that we can use to create that effect. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been in this no pain, no gain, go harder, go home space for so yeah. long. But the rubber band has been stretched to the point that it's lost el elasticity. And to be able to find that, to be able to find the creativity that you and I need to be able yeah. to solve problems or to be innovative, we've got to do the opposite of output. Now, you said that there's going to be some new type of technology that'll be coming out in the next couple of years. Is there anything that you could share with us that, you know, that we could keep an eye out for? Especially yeah, you know, those of us that go to the gyms and stuff, what they might be yeah. bringing in for, for us in our recovery. Yeah, I think we're in a really cool space right now, A, because of the consumer openness, curiosity to try. Americans especially are super curious about how to put you know wellness technology to work beyond wearables and things like that. What you're going to see soon and what's already beginning is a real reimagination of certain ancient practices, right? Sauna has been around for hundreds of years yeah. and this community that develops around sauna, same way with cold plunge or cold water exposure. In some of the happiest countries in the world, this has been a practice for a very, very long time. Yeah. Even with very little sunlight, even with very little, you know, summertime, that type of thing, the things that you would think, you know, grow happiness. What we're seeing from a technology perspective is how then do you put these ancient practices to work in a practical, applicable way that's accessible mm. um, for the consumer? Like, how do you cold plunge without getting wet? Yeah. How do you do that in a <laughs> commercial environment? And we're just now starting to cusp on some of those things. The other thing, and it's, it's not that innovative, but it's a real return to a different way of thinking is the community that it gets built around these types of practices. We got into this very solitary space during COVID and after COVID. And the things that are exploding right now are the remedy places. They are the run clubs where people are actually going out and meeting each other in person, other like-minded people oh, yeah. in these communities. And I think the, the businesses that really have the staying power are the ones who then create this like-minded community around certain practices as the baseline. And that's not a new technology, but it's a change in the way that we have applied these things over, especially over the last five years, because people are desperate to reconnect. Yeah, I love that. That's that's great to hear that there's a resurgence of that again, and, and the idea of building community because you know it was so so alone for quite quite so long. I was not like I had forced myself. I tried to find whoever wanted to get together, but I had family members that were very like in their solitude during those times. And I personally don't think that that was a very healthy way to be for anyone, especially kids. No, no, especially children, especially young adults, you know, people going through major life changes. It, it didn't necessarily change our desire for connection. It disrupted our behavior and it disrupted our behavior long enough to create a habit around that solitude. 
what that means now is creating some different habits again. Um, yeah. And really realizing that people are looking for that and they're looking for a way to make that accessible, um, which is very interesting, right? It just, I live here in St. Petersburg, Florida, which is an awesome mm, town yes. to be in for kind of like minded health and wellness people and a coffee and cold plunge club. Um, that and I need cool. to touch with these people because it's like the third or fourth time I've talked about them. So I need to get in touch with them and just let them know that I think they're doing something really interesting. But popped up just a few months ago. Cold plunge places all over. I've been to most of them here in the town. They're great. But this little community, like on Saturdays, you're going to spend a couple of hours having coffee and doing. I love that. Plunging together. It's now up to like two or 300 people after like three sessions. They just have their third session. It's packed. And the purpose is, you know, to really get out and try and reconnect in an intentional way in society. Um, and doing that around certain based practices like health and wellness is pretty ideal. Yeah. Um, it's a good way to start a conversation with just about anyone. I would join that. Like, I like coffee. I'm not exactly enjoy doing the cold plunge, but I love how I feel afterwards. <laughs> I do too. I do too. I'm addicted to the after effects. Same way with red yeah. light. You know, one of our, our newer pieces of equipment, and this has been a learning for me in the last year. We incorporated near infrared with it. And that combination is a game changer with red light itself. And so, you know, you get out of that, you get out of a cold plunge and you've got this like rush of having mm. warm up a few hours or sometimes even a couple of days afterwards. That's what people are looking for in this moment, whether it's from sunshine, whether it's from red light, whether it's from cold plunge, you see these modalities that create that effect are becoming really, really important um, in our daily habits. Yeah, and I think my dogs are really getting excited about that too. They're they're all they're yeah. fans of it. As we started talking about that, they started getting hyper. But I have done the cryotherapy. Well, I did the red light and the cryotherapy back to back, and I, yeah. I I just felt so rejuvenated the rest of the day. It was just such an amazing, like just feeling for your body. It's just you, you can immediately feel the difference and what it does yeah. for you. So I'm a fan for sure. I say the same thing, like. And I say the same thing about people will ask me, well, how do I know if I'm in quality red light? I'm like, you'll feel the difference. Oh, yeah. Because the first time you're in quality red light, you're like, oh, I didn't know it did all of this. I didn't know I was going to feel it this way. It's a really impressive thing. Cold plunge is the same. So is cryo on a lot of levels. Just that heightened awareness and optimism that you feel is really useful. Yeah, for sure. The cryo or the cold plunge, you can do it for a couple of minutes. You can do it. I'm telling you, you can hang in there and do it. It goes by yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's a really, I'm big, I'm getting my doctorate and I'm studying leadership resilience. And I love this idea of being able to intentionally create resilience through doing our purpose. Um, life provides you opportunities to create resilience. They're not always what we would choose or what we enjoy, but there are practices that you can do that you know, choosing to do hard things, right? If, yeah. the, if the toughest thing that you're going to do that day from a physical and mental perspective is dip yourself in ice water and you've already checked that off the list, everything else seems a little bit more simple and straightforward. For and sure. it's really just training the brain to like lean into the difficulty instead of shy away from it and avoid it. And so cold plunge is a great way to do that. Yeah. Fight or flight. Fight. That's right. That's <laughs> Brent, right. with that being said, where can people find you, connect with you and learn more about JK products? Yeah, people can connect with me on my LinkedIn. Uh, that's really where I spend. If I spend any time on social media, that's where I do it. Um, and they can connect with us at www.wellnessjk.com. Awesome. You guys, I'm going to put those links in the show notes. So if you connect with Brynn, go follow her on LinkedIn. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the products, also go shoot with her message there or go to their website. It's very informative. You'll learn a little bit more about all the different things that they offer. Brian, this is the part of the show where I like to ask for last words of wisdom or advice. What would you like to leave with us today? The first thing that comes to mind is just don't ever give up. When you don't know what to do, just take the next step and stay focused on motion. And the video will become clear. You know, a lot of times we expect us the path to already be charted for us. But I realized a few years ago that when you're charting your own path, you just have to take the next step. Just being willing and ambitious and audacious enough to do it. Oh, I love that. Awesome. Bryn, thank you so much. I love these types of conversations around health, wellness, vitality, and speaking to such an incredibly successful, beautiful woman like yourself. Yes, my day has started off on the right foot. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day and thank you for having me. You're welcome. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. 
Don't forget to subscribe, follow, rate, review, comment, share, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.